I'm going to have the kids come forward. I almost couldn't see you guys back there. <laughs> How you doing? Good? You guys like going outside? You like playing in the mud and the dirt? Yeah? Did you like yesterday going out in nature? And I mean, there was a lot of dirt out there, a lot of animals out there. You know, in the winter up north, you can't play in the dirt. There's snow. It's all hidden. There's no dirt. So it's not real, well, it's not real messy until the, until the snow starts melting, and then it gets kind of messy. But what would happen if I took this and I dumped this all over the floor? The floor to be dirty? Might be some people in the church that get a little upset with me. Because <laughs> of the dirt. <laughs> you know, we, we came from dust and we're going to return to dust. You know that? It says in the Bible, God formed Adam and Eve, Adam out of the dust. He took the dust and he breathed on them. And we'll return to dust. So, why is it we like playing in dirt? It's fun. But think about, think about sin. You know, if I pour this on you, and you brush yourself off, there's going to be some that stick, right? You're going to get some dirt that you just can't get off. Well, just for an illustration. <laughs> but what if we get wash it off? Yeah. Well, then think about baptism. Baptism is a washing. Washes away our sin. But what happens? What do, we, what do we unfortunately do? Yeah, we like go back into the dirt. Go back, we go back into the sin. And then what do we do? But what do we do when we sin? For, yeah, repent. Jesus has died for your sins to cover all of them. And we can go to him and ask for his forgiveness. And he, if you, if you remember from our, our confession and absolution, he will cleanse us. He will purify us. He will make us holy. Yeah, because when he comes back, we will be fully. Oh, that's, a, that's an ironic word. Fully holy. <laughs> but it's true. When he comes back, sin will no longer be a part of us. We will, we will fully see his glory. Let's say a short prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for everything you have done in Christ Jesus for us, especially the forgiveness of sin that we have freely by faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? And then later on, you're on the stand and you get caught in a lie. You can't handle the truth. You know who that is? Remember the movie? Tom Cruise. I actually got it wrong in the other church. I was thinking Jack Nicholson, but he was the one that was on the stand. It's been a while since I've seen that movie. You know, you got to understand, part of every tax dollar winds up paying for abortions. 
So I figure, hey, why not fudge a little bit? Take a few extra deductions. That's a half truth. Really, Mom, I would I would have gotten home soon, or I wouldn't have gotten home sooner anyway. So I just figured, hey, I'm not going to get home any sooner. I'll just stay over at my friend's house a little longer, and wait till traffic lightens up. Probably a half truth. I love this one. It's one we all like to use. The devil made me do it. <laughs> Half truth. The devil is great about playing games with half-truths. And he demonstrated that in our text. And, but blaming it all on the devil is only a half-truth. Eve and Adam and we are wholly responsible for giving in to temptation. Thank God he's wholly true to us. Totally true, in other words. Keeping the promise he gave in the garden to send a savior for our sins. Half truths condemn and destroy. But whole truths deliver us in Christ. We often desire to cover our sin by half truths. Truth. You know, as we're going through the text, I didn't think of this one, but as we were going through the text again, I thought of it. Well, it was the woman's fault. I wouldn't have divorced her except I couldn't live with her. And then he could flip it around, too. Half truth. Well, he stole it. He stole the candy bar. I just took it from him. He just gave it to me. So technically, I didn't steal it. Half truth. Go before a judge and tell him that. I know a, a, a family from years ago, kind of a, a relative of theirs. The uh, uncle had abused one of the girls, and the mother didn't say anything. Thinking, well, if I think everything's okay, everything's good. Well, guess what? She ended up getting arrested, too. We can't sit there and just let things go on around us and expect not for there not to be consequences. What are the half-truths that we use? Well, I'm going to be forgiven anyway. That's a slippery slope. Well, everyone else was doing 90 miles an hour. He just ticked me off. You know, if he wouldn't have been so angry at me and come at me so angry, I wouldn't have hit him. Or other actions or other, you know, just pick your poison. So it wasn't my fault. It was his. What are some of the half-truths that you can think of in your head that we use at times? You know, sometimes as Lutherans, we'll pick on the Lutherans a little bit. <laughs> I've been one all my life. Well, we're saved by grace through faith, so I'm good. I've got it. It's almost like I got a... I got a uh, a permit to sin. It's like, no. No, we don't. God is cleansing us in Christ Jesus. We say it in our confession every Sunday. He will forgive your sins and cleanse you. 
Well, I did some good works, so it kind of balances out. I've actually heard this. It actually balances out. I, I always love when I hear, I don't always hear it at a funeral, but every once in a while, and I've heard this before, I won't tell you what church. <laughs> well, they were a good person, so surely they'll be in heaven. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. In other words, if we say we have no sin, we call God a liar, if you go back to the text. We call him a liar. But God's truth, Christ, the truth incarnate, covers our sin purely, purely. Christ's sin covers, or Christ covers our sin, being crushed on the cross. He truly paid the whole price to compensate. Problem with the world is they're not kind of, they're kind of wondering, well, they don't understand the Old Testament. They don't understand the need for sin to be paid for. They don't understand the sacrificial system by God. Not by man. God created out of the dirt every one of us. Because we all come from Adam. But unfortunately the world kind of goes its own way and makes up his own mind about what is what. But we do not. I love this in the text. When, she, when God says, where are Adam and Eve, where are you? <laughs> Anybody else find that humorous? <laughs> As if he doesn't know where they are? But how often do we say, God, where are you? <laughs> when he's right here. When he's right with you. When he's all over and all we got to do is reach out to him. But it... Somehow we think we can hide from him, and we can't. But in Christ, he truly forgives us. Christ suffered and died for our sins. That does something to us. Number one, it forgives us completely. Grasp onto that. Take hold of that. You are forgiven on account of Christ, purely by your faith. Now what? Now what? If you want to reply, go ahead. This is where it makes people nervous when I do that. What about those good works? I'm actually looking for something for, from LWML. There we go. I hit it. You know, why do you think the LWML exists? Is it so you women can pat yourself on the back? No. No. The Lutheran Women's Missionary League is an official auxiliary of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. Since 1942, the LWML has focused on affirming each woman's relationship with Christ, encouraging and equipping women to live out their Christian lives in active, active mission ministries and to support global ministries. We're talking good works. We're talking the works that flow out of faith. Thank you. From faith. And do you women think it's a big deal? Do you, do you even think of the impact you have like it's this big trouble, hard to do, complicated? Probably not. Probably not. 
those good works that flow out of us because we are forgiven, that Christ has covered our sin, come about naturally. And it just so happened today we are celebrating LWML Sunday. So I thought it was appropriate to acknowledge those good, good works that that organization does. But here's another thing, the good works that we all do. How many made coffee for your spouse this morning? I did. I did. Right? <laughs> How many of you made breakfast for your spouse? I didn't do that. Not this morning. <laughs> How many of you hold the door? How many of you are pleasant, saying a kind word to somebody? Those are works that flow out of us. We don't even think about them. They just, they just flow out of our faith. And we thank God for what he has done inside of us. I count of Christ Jesus. You know, sometimes we don't even think. Don't let the left hand know what the right hand's doing. We don't even think about those. It just happens. So yeah, I could have taken that Genesis text and man, I could have hammered law to beat the band. But guess what? Those works are flowing out of us. Because I've seen it. I've seen the kindness between people in this church. I've seen the kindness in people reaching out to others in the neighborhood. And man, those are good things. You look around, we, got, we have different people here today. I don't mean different like they say in Minnesota. <laughs> you guys got that one. <laughs> Remember, I lived in Minnesota for quite a while. so You know, but just, it's, it's nice to see new faces. What a wonderful thing of what God is doing in this place. Through his word. You know, we don't have to hide from God. He clothed Adam and Eve. And he clothes us. With Christ's righteousness. Your sins have been forgiven. As far as the east is from the west. Amen.